Hi and welcome to this video log with me, Swim Cycle Run Coach. Well, this week we're going to review another book, and this is a rather interesting one, Anatomy for Runners by Jay Dickery. Now, Jay Dickery is a clinician who's also a biomechanist who also is a coach, and he's a runner. So all those four things mean that he really wants to get the most out of his running. And he comes from the basis of knowing that 82% of runners get injured. And he's looking at that injury, or those injuries, and saying, how can they be prevented? What's the best way for any athlete to prevent being injured? And if 82% of us are getting injured, that's a really good question. If there's a mantra that runs through the, this book, it's this, and that is, Large forces generated through unstable levers is a recipe for disaster. And what does that mean? That means if you can't control exactly what you need to control biomechanically when you run through your muscular skeletal system, then you're in big trouble and you're going to lead to injury. And he goes about firstly explaining what the muscular skeletal system is and the biomechanics of running and then how to stabilise everything and make sure that it's all correctly placed. He does really consider, and I think this is now correct or accepted law, that the majority of force from a runner, or the majority of force a runner should generate, should be from his elastic tissue, or his elastic rebound. And he looks into, into that in unusual ways. One thing that's very interesting is his view on how we run um, and the natural position of our foot as we run. We drive off the big toe, and that's clear, we obviously do that. And to do that, we need a very strong big toe to be able to, to achieve that drive off the foot. And if we look here, at uh, just, just here, at the baby's foot, you'll see that the toe box actually expands out at the end of the foot. Whereas what we do normally in everyday life, in what we do, and oft often a lot of running shoes do this, is we actually compress the foot. If you look at this picture here, we compress the foot at the front, and therefore we're reducing the toes, the big toes ability, to actually drive off. And that actually is quite an insightful thing to say. So shoes that splay the feet are far better for you than shoes that constrict the feet. And when you think about it, women are standing up in high heels all day and they're shoving their foot into a toe point and they're completely restricting their foot and they're in an unnatural position all day with the foot high and the heel high and they, they then try and run and is it any surprise that they cause problems for themselves because this to them is a completely unnatural position. So we have to have strength, but we also have to load our spring. He's a great believer in actually loading a spring from a very strong base. And that spring is our connective tissue. And you might have thought that something like chai running or pose running loads a spring. But he would slightly disagree with that. Um, if you look at the, the picture here, yes, heel striking ahead of you, is an absolute no-no. It increases a spike of uh, tension uh, and force within the body and it doesn't evenly load the spring. It really smacks something in and you can't get any force into your connective tissue. What you want to do is load the spring gradually and then release it. And to do that he suggests that you actually land slightly in front of your centre of gravity, very slightly, as in the bottom picture, and then you get a smooth curve of force generation and you can actually release that swiftly as you need to. If you land right under your centre of gravity, is what he's saying, you actually load it too quickly. You're trying to fire it off too quickly. You've actually got to load it to be able to release it. Interesting thought and something that you might want to look at in your running. So, let's go back to the mantra. Large forces through unstable levers lead to disaster. Okay, and if we accept that for the moment, just naturally, um, what's the next step? Well, the next step is looking at the shoe choice that you have, and he goes into this in great detail. 
Um, effectively, modern shoes have quite a high heel and quite a cushioned base all the way through. And his saying that effectively is like running on marshmallows. And if you run on marshmallows, you have very little feel for the ground. And if you tip yourself forward, you can't use your foot successfully. So he would prefer something that is virtually flat, where there's a minimal difference between the heel and the forefoot. Interestingly, he goes into quite detail about the barefoot movement, barefoot runners, minimalist shoes. And he has an interesting point to say about those. Yes, they will help you feel the floor, feel how you should be running better, but they come at a cost, and that cost is energy. It actually takes more energy to run either barefoot or in a minimalist shoe than it does in something that actually has some cushioning in it. Because your foot has to do all the work. Now if your foot's doing all the work, that has to mean more energy use. And his point would be that if you're either a triathlete or a middle to long distance runner, then that energy use could be put to better use if you actually have it as energy release for muscles. So that leads us to two important parts of the book. First, proprioception. The ability to know what the other bits of your body is doing. And he goes into this in great detail and thinks that it's hugely important. And I'm tempted to agree naturally with him without his reasoning behind it. And there's lots of exercises that you can do to improve your proprioception. We're showing one here, catching a ball on one foot. Try it. Standing on one foot with your eyes closed. Try it. See how good your proprioception is. Now, proprioception can be improved very quickly, but the exercises in this book really do focus the mind and focus your proprioception so they improve correctly. There's one area that this book is exceptionally good in, and that's in diagnosing weakness. Let's face it, if we can't diagnose the weakness, we can't fix the problem. And he goes into great detail about diagnosing the weaknesses that you could have and the problems that that could lead to. So there's not just, this might be weak, fix it, but this might be weak, it can cause these problems, fix it. And you can actually see if you're suffering from a recurrent problem, what you should be doing to actually improve that. Now it might be the case that in a test you're not particularly weak at something, you don't have to work on it. But if you are weak at something, at least then you can work on something knowing why you are. If you're injured, you can look at the injury, see what might be causing that injury, and try and fix those problems. And if you fix the problems, you should not have a recurring injury. And that's the whole point of the book, really. So the last part of the book is showing you exercises. We'll illustrate one here. Um, on how to strengthen yourself, on what exercises to do, on how many repeats to do. Interestingly, he would suggest that a stretch to be effective needs to be done for three to five minutes. If you want to realign uh, tissues, such as connective tissue, then you have to manipulate them into realignment, such as using things like uh, the foam rollers and balls and things like that, or even just pure manipulation. But the strengthening exercises, the manipulations and everything else lead to something that he believes will stop injury in the long term. And that's got to be all of our goal. So who should read this book? Well, I would suggest that any runner who's got a recurrent injury or keeps on getting injured should read this book. Any coach should read this book because increasing your knowledge about anything is good for a coach. And if you're just an interested runner who wants to run their best, read this book because it is exceptionally well thought out and I think the science behind it is virtually unquestionable. If you're confused about what type of style you should run in, read this book, use the knowledge within it to decide how you should be running, what kind of shoe you should be wearing, what you want to try, how you should strengthen your body up. Okay, that's it for this week. Next week, it's going to be something completely different. Again, I'll be swimming at Thought Lake this weekend. If you're there, join me. Last weekend was fantastic. Keep well, happy trying.